Well, I'm back from my vacation, and I told you I'd get back with you and let you know what I found out. One of the things I was going to test was the Metabones adapter with my Nikon lenses. And I was very surprised with what I found out. I expected to find the Nikon lenses on my A7 to be a little bit sharper than the zoom lenses. However, that's not what I found. The Nikon lenses on the Metabones, the prime lenses, were not sharper than the zoom lens. Consequently, I would tend not to recommend the Metabones adapter and going with the Nikon lenses on the uh, Sony A7 unless you don't want to spend the money for the Sony or the Zeiss lens and you already have the Nikon lens. The Nikon lens will do a similar job. I was very pleased with the Sony 70-200. One of the things that was new to me with the Nikon vibration reduction system, you didn't notice it in the viewfinder like you do with the Sony. With the Sony, when you press the pre-release, it smooths out your viewfinder. So you see a much smoother image. It is a big lens, as you can see. It's as big or bigger than the Nikon lens of similar length, but it's easily hand-holdable. It does come with a collar, which of course I took off because I did most of my shooting handheld. Uh, this lens, if you do shoot long and you want to use it with a collar, the collar very easily in, uh, installs and removes, so that's very handy. And it was a perfect complement to the little Sony a6000. Now, I'm going to talk a little bit about the a6000 because it really impressed me. It feels like it should be a point-and-shoot camera. It, should, it feels more like a toy than a, than a, than a full APS-C camera. But the results are nothing less than you would expect or hope from an APS-C camera. I found myself using these cameras together around my neck at the same time. And because this is so small and so convenient to use, I wound up threading this in and out of the straps to get this camera in position or out of position as needed. Because it's so small, it's just easy to move around. The lens on this, the 16 to 50, perfectly overlaps with the 70 to 200. This would roughly be the equivalent of a 24 to 75, and of course 75 gives you just a little bit of overlap with that 70 to 200. And I found myself very pleased with the results. I used this camera, as a matter of fact, I'm gonna tell you a little funny story. I went to a show in Las Vegas, Shania Twain, and they weren't gonna let me take the camera in. And because the production was being videotaped for production, they said we could bring a camera in. So I ran out and said, hey, I want my camera. Well, they wouldn't let me take both lenses with my camera. They said if I took just the one lens that that was okay. Now, I don't really understand the logic of that, but when they saw how small this was, I think they agreed and they let me take it in. So the longest I had on this was a 50. I was probably 70 feet away. The photographs I got of this were really quite delightful. It's very low light. I was shooting at 1600 ASA to get what I wanted at a uh, shutter speed of one one hundredth of a second. Uh, some of the shots I actually slowed down quite a bit because the light kept changing. So even with slower shutter speeds, the same f-stop, you got a decent exposure. For those of you who are looking at this camera that have DSLRs, I'm going to talk a little bit about the live viewfinder because the live viewfinders really sets these mirrorless cameras apart. Typically when you are in something like a show and you're trying to find your exposure, the exposure changes all the time. They have hot lights, they have colored lights, they have lights that go on and off, they have lights that flare at you, they shoot lights out into the audience, all kinds of lighting changes. With a DSLR, you simply cannot meter for what you need to meter. You can't do it. Even with the spot, you rarely have a chance to get it set before it changes. With the live viewfinder, and you have your finger on the f-stop, you can dial it in second by second. And I got a lot more shots 
than I would have gotten with the DSLR. They're much slower to change. And the live viewfinder lets me know what I've gotten. Have you ever heard the term chimping? Chimping is when you take a picture and then you look at your screen. It's very slow. And if you have a DSLR, that's pretty much all you have available to you because your viewfinder does not show you what you took. With this camera, you can preview them and it will show you what you've taken in the, in the viewfinder and on the screen. So you have two means to check your image. Now, I'm going to go on just a little further because checking your image through the viewfinder is much more accurate than looking at the screen because the screen is affected by the ambient light levels much more so. The viewfinder has some effect from the ambient light, but it's not really the viewfinder that changes, it's your eyes. Your eyes adjust to the light level. If you're in a dark cave for a long time and you're looking through the viewfinder, the image is gonna look brighter than it really is. Uh, when I do, what I did find is when I took pictures in the cave, I had to consciously think about my eyes are adjusting to the dark. My eyes are seeing what's in the viewfinder brighter than it really is. Consequently, I would err a little bit to the overexposed side and that seemed to work pretty well. If you're in a DSLR, the live viewfinder has a lot more advantages than people like to talk about and I think it makes the mirrorless system much better for most of us and it's certainly faster. The A6000 shoots very quickly and one of the things I was very pleased with is taking pictures of moving vehicles. It tracked the moving vehicles and got clear shots for me much better than I've ever gotten before. With the D800, I don't think I was anywhere near as successful with it as I am with this. But I was very happy with that. I used this camera to take pictures at night, late night dark, on the strip. Did a great job. Did it with this one. Very happy with it. When I needed to go long, pull in a shot, this one lens was absolutely clear and what I used was a monopod uh, with, the, with the attachment. And let me talk a little bit about the attachment. I used this really right stuff L bracket so I can take horizontal pictures and vertical photographs. And it's very handy. I really like having the ability to go vertical instantaneously. I probably will get one for this, but at the moment, I'm enjoying how small this is a lot. With my Fuji, I use the L bracket. It's not as small to start with, and I find I use it a lot more vertically. Most of you should increase the amount of your vertical shots. A third of your shots should be vertical. Somebody told me one time to go through my shots and see how many of my best shots were in which format, ver vertical or horizontal. And I found that the shots that I picked as favorites, about 50% of them were vertical. And I was only taking about 20% in the vertical format. So what I was basically doing is limiting the amount of my favorite shots to a very small, small portion of the photographs I had taken. So I started taking more vertical shots. Consequently, the L bracket is very useful. So in summary, let me say this. I was very happy with the 16 to 50 Sony lens. It's very inexpensive. It works great. I used it with the Sony 55 to 210. This is uh, pretty small compared to the one for the full frame, and it covers virtually the same range, maybe actually a little bit more, because with a crop factor, this goes out to 300, which is a lot, lot longer. However, if you compare apples and apples, if you use this lens or this lens, I'd probably be better off using the 70 to 200 and cropping it down than using this lens. This lens is substantially more portable and the quality is acceptable. It depends on what you're taking the photograph for, what your needs are, if you're going for optimum quality. I think if I were going for optimum quality, I would shoot for this, but that would be, when I say optimum, I mean for print at 16 to 20 or larger. This will do just fine for anything smaller than that. This is, is an excellent lens, very happy with it. I'm gonna leave off with that. I want to reiterate one thing, and that is the A6000 
in combo with the A7 is a fabulous kit. And you have the range from 24 millimeters, clear up to 200 millimeters. There's other lenses available, the 10 to 18, that if you want to get wider. This is a great kit. The A7 at the moment is a great deal for a full frame camera. You just can't beat it. So I can't tell you how happy I am with the A6000, especially in conjunction with the A7. And I'm not going to be using the Metabones with the Nikon lenses. I have what I need. Remember, the best camera is the camera you carry with you. Remember that and keep it with you.